So the second thing that we're going to talk about is a thing called auriculotherapy, which I, I doubt that any of you have ever, ever heard of, but have people heard of acupuncture? So within acupuncture, there's a form of acupuncture called ear acupuncture, where they use the, the ear instead of the whole body system. Auriculotherapy is literally like a, a modernisation or an evolution out of ear acupuncture. And what they found when they started to research this was that it wasn't meridians. If people see meridians, there are all these lines all over the body. They're kind of like energy flow charts that the Chinese have developed over thousands of years. What they found when they started researching the ear was that actually it's nerve endings, it's not meridians. So they started to play around with electronics and electrical circuitry and they started stimulating different points with electrical circuits. And they found that they could literally stimulate different parts of the brain when they you know, activated these areas electronically. So what they've literally got to the point of is when you look at your ear, if you can imagine you've got a little baby inside your ear and he's upside down, so your earlobe is his head, you can see how his arms and legs are tucked around your, the top of your earlobe, and all of his stomach and abdomen and chest is inside you know, the inner part of your ear. So that's what auriculotherapy is about, is about this connection between these, these reflex points on the ear and the rest of the body. So when we treat the points of the ear, it's very good for pain management because we can tap straight into the pain centres of the brain. Good for people who've had a, acute injuries. Um, you know, you can get quite good pain relief quite quickly. It's good for chronic pain sufferers, uh, musculoskeletal stuff. Um, stress and emotional disorders because this is the shortest connection point neurologically to get to your brain. What is the other system that, that um, has a really good connection to the brain? Has anyone had diagnosis done when someone looks in their eyes? What, what's that called? Iridology? Yeah, so when they're looking, that's what they're literally looking at is they're looking at a map of your brain in, in, your, you know, in your eyes. The ear is the same kind of principle. The benefit of the ear is that we can actually treat from the ear. Would anyone like someone sticking needles in their eye or putting electrical currents on their eye? We wouldn't. So we can do it on the ear, though. We can literally either use needles. We prefer to use microcurrent, which is like a, a battery-operated way of doing things. And it's very established for addictive and compulsive disorders. Um, it's been used you know, throughout history in terms of helping people to overcome their, their addictions. And it's, and it's fantastic for brain stuff because it is such a close connection to our brain. And, and it also has the benefits, so if, if people have heard of some of the benefits of acupuncture, you can get the same kind of um, you know, whole body improvements quite often with auriculotherapy. So this is, this is what your, the Melways map looks like on your body. Um, so the outer body is, is sort of like your skeleton, the outer part of your ear. The inner part of your ear is like all of your organs. And then your earlobe is where your brain and, and your skull is. So we can literally find different active points on your ear. We use a little electric current tester. So this thing here, you can literally run it around and it'll find the pitch of the... I'll do it on... So that, you know, it, it finds little squealy high pitch points and they're the active um, reflex points. And then in, in there is microcurrent, so we can then treat that point with some electricity, just a really uh, small little microcurrent and, and activate those parts of the brain. So it's quite an interesting um, therapy. It's, it's basically came out of China, but it was really developed in France, in Europe and Germany, and then it's gone to America where they've done a lot of research at the University of of California and Los Angeles. So this is the basic principle. Let's say you've got something happening in your elbow. That's going up through your nervous system to the right side of your brain. Your brain's thinking, there's something wrong with my elbow, there's something wrong with my elbow. So there's a particular part of your brain that will be, you know, hyperactive. And then that point, there'll be an elbow point around out here on your ear. Guess what? That'll light up like a little electronically it'll be lit up there. So we can find the point, treat it, and then send a, you know, like a, a, a balancing energy into that part of your brain and hopefully to that part of your body. So as I said, we, you can do it with needles, you can do it with little magnetic ball bearings. We prefer to do it with microcurrent because it's, it's more um, accurate in terms of finding the points and treating the points. So we use this thing called a skin. 
So the third finger is, is nutrients and diet. So the most classical diet that's been associated with improving the way that your brain works, and, and particularly in terms of improving uh, behaviour, is a thing called the fine gold, fine gold diet. Has anyone heard of that? It's, it's like from the 60s it was developed. Like years ago when I was doing a talk on ADHD at a community group, one lady told me how her kids were, you know, she was told that her kids were hyperactive. And she found this diet and put, put the kids on the diet way back in the late 60s and early 70s and got, got amazing results with, with her kids' um, brain functions. So what it's really about is getting rid of the allergies and the sensitivities that are in your diet because each one of us has probably got stuff that we eat that we probably shouldn't eat. Okay? Um, but we probably actually like to eat because quite often we're quite, quite attached to our allergic foods. So dairy, wheat, salicylates are you know, probably some of the most common ones. It's very much into getting sugar out of your diet because sugar is really something that we don't need a lot of. Your body is able to produce its own sugar, so we really don't need a lot of it synthetically in our system. We, we need more carbohydrates than we need sugars. So it's about minimising artificial food additives, flavourings, colourings, preservatives, MSG. You know, it's such a cliche, but it's such a truth, isn't it? That you give a kid, you know, the red lollies. You know, we all laugh about it. It's like, oh, oh, oh he's about to have the red cordial. Guess what he's going to be doing in ten minutes? You know, and then we wonder why the kid's running around in ten minutes. Um, you know, so this synthetic stuff is is very toxic to your nervous system. Minimising caffeine. So caffeine, again, is a, thin, a synthetic psychoactive drug. It's a, it's a stimulant and, and our, our culture is addicted to it and, and totally dependent on it. Um, you know, maybe a little bit is not a bad thing, but you know, some of us use it to excess. But in people who have, do have brain problems, if you are struggling with depression or anxiety, then really caffeine is something you really need to work on getting out of your system. The other thing they do is they get you to keep a diet diary because if you actually start to write down what you're uh, eating and then on the other side of the page you actually start to note the way that you're feeling or the, or the amount of pain you have or the amount of uh, flexibility that you have, you actually do start to see relationships with, oh look, last night I had cheesy nachos, today I can barely bend over. You know, like you'll find patterns. But when you're just eating and just living, you, you never ever see the relationships because it's usually something you ate yesterday. You know, it's not usually something you ate 10 minutes ago that's affecting the way you're feeling right now. <coughs> the problem with the fine gold diet is it's really about what not to eat. You know, it's, so people go, well, you've told me what I can't eat and there's nothing left. <laughs> so that's the danger. But it's about getting sugar down, it's getting rid of the artificial stuff, it's about getting rid of the salicylates. Um, so lots of fruits and perfumes are very high in salicylates. Um, aspirin is literally our salicylate, so some people are very sensitive um, to, to those sorts of things. MSG, you know, has everyone ever had Chinese food syndrome? Ch what do they call it? Chinese, uh, I think they call it Chinese food syndrome, don't they? You know when you get that dry mouth and you have to drink three litres of water and you can't sleep for three days and you, you usually end up with diarrhoea and... Uh, so sulphites, your preservatives, so things like beers and and uh, fruit juices and, and um, soft drinks and lots of processed food has got lots of preservatives in it. Even, even dried fruits, you know, full of preservatives. Nitrites, nitrates, they're in the processed meats, um, you know, can be very toxic to your, to your nervous system. And then there's the food allergies. And, and what they talk about in, in Fine Gold is if you've got a kid who's literally autistic or, or Asperger's, then guaranteed you've got food allergies that need to be you know, either found somehow or, or reduced preferably. So this little guy is Halloween night and uh, this lady's a bit shocked. He says, my goodness, what a great costume. And she goes, oh, no, no, he's just had too much sugar. 